So if you come over to agentorangeandpanama.com and follow my blog, uh, over there I have started a blog. And if Panama did not have Agent Orange sent to it, what in the world are these Agent Orange barrels doing in front of these old Sherman quarters? Uh, quarters 309, there's about nine Agent Orange barrels in a row and they're being used as fencing material in front of these old quarters. This picture was taken in spring of 2020. So if the VA and the DOD says that Agent Orange was never in Panama, then what in the world are these old Agent Orange barrels? How did they get there? So um, I started to blog about all of this. So follow my blog over here and uh, you can go to the next post by clicking the next post and talks about what is Agent Orange and the physical properties of the normal butyl esters of 24D and 245T and orange. Notice that orange is in parentheses. That's because it really wasn't orange as we've discovered. It was a commercial herbicide used tactically in war. Dr. Albert Young has written many reports telling veterans that they just don't know what the heck they're talking about, that there's no Agent Orange ever shipped to Panama. And yet in his 1970 report, uh, he was asked to, uh, by the Federal, uh, Federal Pesticide Committee to provide uh, the military herbicides and insecticides being used by the military. He wrote this report as a young lieutenant on uh, military herbicides and insecticides in 1970, in March of 1970. And in this report, it, it says military herbicides and insecticides by A.L. Young. The table of contents, he lists all the different types of pesticides and herbicides being used by the military. And he claims here that uh, the herbicides mentioned in this pamphlet are those currently in use in military programs. He never says one word about tactical in his whole report in 1970, nor does he even mention Vietnam. And we do know that Vietnam was going on at that time. But in Vietnam, they were using civilian produced herbicides and they were using them tactically in war. They were not tactical herbicides. There is no difference between civilian herbicides and the so-called tactical herbicide orange. As mentioned in this report, he says that these were being used on base. So here are the military code Remember, this is just a military code, orange or purple, pink, white, or blue. And if you look at the mil specs for the rainbows, you'll see that they are just a code depending on the color of the stripes on the barrels. And they have the trade names and the common names. So the common name for orange or purple, depending on the year, because remember, Agent Orange should not start shipping until 1965. So 24D and 245T is either orange or purple on the shipments, depending on the year. So when we see it in 1958, shipped to Panama, Vietnam, and Thailand, that is purple. In 1965, that is orange, supposedly. Orange was supposed to be uh, less dioxin, however, uh, than purple. However, uh, the batches, not all batches were tested and we have no idea um, because we have no records to go back on. If you notice, this is the exact same chart that Alvin Young uses in his 1978 report later on 
that he claims that this chart and these chemicals, these rainbow chemicals, were shipped through uh, as sourced by the FCPC, which as we have seen, the FCPC sources the U.S. Commerce FT-410. The same exact documents that ship 24D and 245T to Panama for decades. So the military defolants, uh, they were orange, 50-50 mixture of N-butyl esters. And as we saw in one of my other blogs, the N-butyl ester was not made especially for Vietnam. It was made uh, all the way back in 1952, at least, uh, probably prior to that. But we saw the USDA using N-butyl esters of 245T uh, in uh, the forest in 1952 and 1952 that would have been have a much higher uh, dioxin content than orange that was used later. It says the 2,4-D is commercially applied and uh, the military use of 2,4-D involves its formulation with 2,4-5-T in orange. In addition, 2,4-D is used on aquatic weeds for brush control and as a growth stimulator. If you've read The Travels of Orange, which is available on Amazon, you will see that 2,4-D was began in Gatun Lake uh, to control the hydrilla, which was interfering with the shipping and 2,4-D was used to uh, control the hydrilla. And we have pictures that we have posted as well uh, from 1968, 20 years later, they're still using 2,4-D and I believe they're probably still using it today. Uh, remember Gatun Lake was jungle prior to being filled in to make the lake uh, for the canal traffic and the weeds were growing underwater and they needed to be controlled. This report also tell, tell us that the military defolants orange and purple contain in butyl esters of 245T. Also, this report tells us that the important plants that are controlled with 245T, uh, they say 245T is one of the most potent brush killers available. It effectively controls mixed species of susceptible woody plants growing on rights of way, fence rows, industrial sites, ditches, and similar non crop areas. Specific plants that 245T will control include ash wild blackberry, hawthorn, oak, ivy, maple, chokeberry, mesquite, birch, elm, brambles, wild grape, honeysuckle, poison ivy, sumac, yellow, willow, and many other woody plants, as well as most non-woody broadleaf plants. So 245T, uh, they're telling us that what was shipped to Panama was a civilian brand that couldn't have hurt us, that I guess didn't have any dioxin in it, which is BS because in his report here, he tells us that when you mix 2,4-D and 2,4-5-T together, it makes orange or purple. And if you use it separately, the 2,4-5-T still has the dioxin contained within it. Unknown amounts of dioxin. Dioxin was produced when 2,4-5-T was produced. Uh, they didn't know it at this time that dioxin was an issue. They were just learning about it. But 2452 2 was used or could be used on any base uh, to make the military more comfortable when they were out in the field or in the firing range uh, to control the poison ivy and sumac. So here it tells us that 245T is absorbed through roots and foliage of the plants. And the esters of 245T, such as the N-butyl ester, are more resistant to the washing action of rain. And as anyone who was stationed in the tropics knows, we got a lot of rain. 
these are the types of esters that are available and the high volatile esters one of them is butyl uh, butyl ester as we saw in one of my other blogs uh, according to the historical documents uh, it was used way back in 1952 uh, Esther was only made for vietnam but as we saw in one of my other blogs and the historical documents that is simply not true uh, and butyl ester was standard for the military. Defolent Blue uh, talks about the chemical compensation and uh, about Anzul Company and other companies that made blue and the properties of blue. Um, it was also used on military bases and things, what it was used for. For military use, the most important formulation is Phytar, 560G Blue and it was used on bases for uh, important plants controlled by blue. Uh, it says current experimental uses uh, include cotton defoliation, weed control in citrus orchards, pre-commercial thinning of conifers and control of undesirable hardwood. Commercial uses include control of such weeds as nutgrass, Dulles grass, crabgrass, Johnson grass, Bermuda grass, spurge, pigweed, fursine, lamb squarters, morning glory, Russian thistle, puncture vine, and daughter. Wait a minute. We were told that Agent Blue and these uh, herbicides were only used in Vietnam. So what in the world are they using it commercially? Why are they using blue commercially because it has always been a commercial herbicide. It was only used tactically in war. It does say that blue is a general weed killer and for general use, it's used on turf. Uh, turf should be mowed closely before application and thoroughly covered by blue. The turf would, will be dead within two to four days. Uh, a lot of times in Panama would see jungle dead after spraying within a couple of days. We didn't know what they were using. Uh, defoliation, for defoliating the foliage should be covered thoroughly. A sep second application is rarely necessary. No wonder they had to have hundreds of thousands of pounds of this stuff in Panama. If, if vegetation had to be thoroughly covered in order to die, they need a lot of it because there's a lot of growth in a tropical environment. These are historical documents. So in 1970, Alvin Young said that these herbicides were used by the military uh, for controlling vegetation didn't say anything about Vietnam or tactical herbicides at all. And yet later on, he changed his tune, as you shall see in future blogs.